Assalamu alaikum students, welcome to virtual university. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about prefixes. It is a lesson, it is a continuation of our previous lesson of word formation. Under word formation, you have done suffixes. Today, we are going to look at prefixes, the part that comes at the beginning of words. You have seen how uh, words can be formed by looking at suffixes, the end part. In today's lesson, we are going to look at some other ways, such as looking at the beginning of a word. And the beginning part is called the prefix. We will look at the prefixes and the stem word, the stem or the base word. And after that, we will look at some synonyms and antonyms, words that are similar in meaning and opposite in meaning, so that along with uh, developing your reading skill, we will be developing your vocabulary as well. Now, a prefix is a letter, a group of letters that is added to the beginning of a stem or the base of a word. Example, uh, in the word untrue, the prefix is un, the letters un, and the base or the stem word is true. Now, sometimes words that are unfamiliar to you consist of a stem word that you know and an added prefix. You are familiar with the stem, but you are not familiar with uh, the bit that comes in front. For instance, take this word, I will uh, read it out to you uh, in a sentence and see if you are familiar with it. We were shocked to learn of the illimitability of the dictator's power. Now, in this, sent in this sentence, the word illim illimitability, it is quite a tongue twister, is a word that does not often appear in print, right? It may be unfamiliar to you. However, you can locate uh, its stem word and the stem word in that word is limit. You are familiar with the word, the stem word which is limit, but with the prefix added to it, you had problems. Now, if you also know that the prefix ill, I-L, which was added to limit, means not. You should be able to determine that illimitability refers to that which has no limits or restriction. The sentence means that we were shocked to learn that there is no limit to the dictator's power. Now, you will look at a list of words in which adapt is the stem or the base word. If this word, the word adapt, is preceded by a prefix, you can make 24 additional words. Right. Take the word adapt. If you add the word non to it, it will become non-adaptational, non-adaptive, non-adapter. You add, if you add pre, the prefix pre the word will become pre-adapt. It can be made into another word, pre-adaptable, pre-adaptation, re, oh, all right. Now, if you add the word, the letters re, you can make another set of words, re-adaptable, re-adaptability, re-adaptation, re-adaptive, re-adaptiveness. Now, we look at another set of words with the same stem word adapt, but a different prefix, the prefix un. You get words like unadaptable, unadaptableness, unadaptive, unadaptiveness and unadaptability. Now, you have noticed how many words were created by adding prefix. If you know the base word, the stem, the meaning of the prefixes, 
will help you find the meaning of the word. Now I am going to, uh, we will look at around 25 uh, prefixes. If you know the meanings of these prefixes, you would not have example, you will not have any problems with uh, finding the meanings of the words. For instance, the first prefix un, un, it means not, no, it is always in the negative. For instance, the word unhappy, unhappy means not happy. In the same way, the prefix non, non, it again means not, no, in the negative. Non-living, take the word non-living, the word non-living means not living. In the same way, the prefix dis, d-i-s, it means not, no, in the negative. To distrust, the word distrust means not to trust. In the same way, you have i-n, the prefix i-n, not, no, that is the meaning. Indirect, the word indirect would mean not direct. The, the prefix pre, p-r-e, if it is added to a word, it will mean before. The meaning of pre is before. Pre-war, the word pre-war means before the war. You have the word post, p-o-s-t, post. It means after. In words like post-war, that is a post-war phenomenon. And the word post-war means after a war. Right? Then we have the word anti, a-n-t-i, the prefix anti. It means opposing, in the opposite. There were anti-war demonstrations in Lahore. Anti-war. Anti means against the war, opposing war. In the same way, you have got another prefix, pro, p-r-o, which means favoring or towards something. You have the phrase pro-war, which means favoring war, towards war. Then you have another prefix, inter, i-n-t-e-r, which means between. The word interstate, intercity. Intercity bus route. They have intercity plans. It means between the cities. Interstate. It means between the states. And you have another prefix, hyper, H Y P E R, which means anything in excess, excessively. Zyatiyo kisi cheez ki. For instance, you say, uh, these kids are hyperactive. It means that they are excessively active. Prefix mal, M-A-L. You come across this prefix many times and it means bad or badly. Uh, you come across a word like malnutrition. It means nutrition which is not good, which is bad. Take the prefix miss, which means incorrect. You are familiar with the word misspell, mistake. Misspell means spelt incorrectly. In the same way, the prefix pseudo, it is spelt P-S-E-U-D-O, which means false or falsely. And you are familiar with the word pseudonym, which means a false name. Uh, the word pseudoscience, meaning a false science. The prefix semi, S-E-M-I. The Americans pronounce it as semi. It means partly. You have the word semi-public. It means partly public. The word semicircle. It means not a full circle. And then you have the prefix R-E, which means again. In the word rewrite, it means to write again. Now we will make sentences where you will explain the meaning of the prefix. There will be a sentence with a word that is in bold type. You will explain the meaning 
of that word in bold type which has a prefix and in the sentence underneath the first sentence you will write the meaning of the prefix take the first sentence hermits are a social people now you know that a means not so a social people means they are people who are not social take the second sentence the child's hyperactivity is alarming and you have to define the word hyperactivity hyper means the child is excessively active the third sentence outer space is illimitable so how would you define the word illimitable you would define it as there is no limit to outer space the fourth sentence the castle was impenetrable to ancient armies the castle was impenetrable to ancient armies if you were uh, if you uh, didn't know the meaning of this word and you but you know the meaning of penetrate the addition of the prefix im will make this word not penetrate penetratable so it would mean ancient armies could not penetrate into the castle number 5 we took an intercontinental flight simple we took a flight which was between different continents or across different continents number 6 the fire did irreparable damage to the house irreparable that which cannot be repaired so you would say they could not repair the damage to the house number 7 did he make a mal adjustment to marriage did he make a mal adjustment to marriage you know the word adjustment adjust adjustment mal adjustment would mean did he not adjust to marriage number 8 the story is pseudo biographical pseudo biographical meaning that it is not a true biography it is a false biography number 9 the patient is semi conscious or as the americans would say the patient is semi conscious which means this patient is not fully conscious and number 10 some thoughts are unutterable some thoughts are unutterable which means that some thoughts one cannot utter let us now look at some more prefixes uh, their usual meaning and how they change the meanings of english words these prefixes will make words which are related to computers and now we will look at prefixes from from the point of view of location time and order number size and whether they are negative or positive on your screen you will see a table and on that table these categories have been written down for the negative you've got un non in this re we've just gone through them then for size you've got semi mini micro you are familiar with min, uh, semi we did it in the last exercise now uh, mini m i n i that is a prefix which denotes size micro is also a prefix which denotes size so if these two prefixes are attached to a word to a base you would know at once that it is something that is small something that is related in size a smaller size 
In the same way, you've got prefixes related with location. And you have prefixes like inter, super, trans, ex, extra, mid. They are all prefixes that are related to location. Then you've got prefixes related with time and order, like pre, which comes before, anti. This is A-N-T-E, not A-N-T-I, which is the opposite. Here, anti means something that comes before, like an antechamber, a chamber, a room that comes before the main room. For, F-O-R-E, for, forecast. You've got the word post, which means, which is related with time and with order. Next, you've got number, and you have prefixes like mono, you've got prefixes like by, you've got a uh, hex, oct, O-C-T, oct, and then you've got uh, prefixes like multi, or the Americans would say multi. You will see that some of these prefixes are negative in their meaning. And you will see that there are some that are not negative but positive. Un, in, im, il, ir, non. These are all words that we have gone through, all prefixes that we have gone through. Let us look at a few positive ones, such as re. R-E-R-E, -re, which means, which is in the positive sense, to do again. For instance, in the word reorganize, that is, you are do it again, you organize another time. The word over, which means too much, like overheat, which means that you heat too much, you heat up something too much. All right. Uh, these were negative and positive prefixes. Let us look at prefixes of size. Semi, which means half or partly, like a semiconductor. Equi, which means equal, equidistant. Maxi, which means big, maxi computer. Micro, which means small, microcomputer. Mini, which means little. The two prefixes prefixes macro and mega. They both mean large. You have them in words like macroeconomics. The word megabyte, both meaning large. Then we have prefixes of location. Inter, super, you are familiar with these. We have the prefix trans, which means across. For instance, in the word transmit, the word transfer, and then you have the word X, which means cut, cut out, out, exclude, the word exclude, the word extrinsic, meaning out, not part of it, outside. You've got the prefix extra, which means beyond, like the word extraterrestrial, those creatures from outer space. The word extraordinary, beyond the ordinary. You've got uh, the prefix sub, which means under, like sub schema. You've got the prefix infra, which means below, below, like infrared, not red, exactly red, but infrared. You've got the prefix peri, which means around, in the word peripheral, right? And then you've got prefixes of time and order. You have the word anti, A-N-T-E, anti and P-R-E, pre. They both mean the same thing, such as before, as I said earlier, antecedent something that comes before, something that has happened earlier. Then you've got the word prefix, again, something that has come earlier. Then you've got the word prime, which means first, in the word 
primary, in the word primitive, something that came very early. You've got the, word, uh, the pr uh, prefix post, which means after, like post dated, a post dated check. And you have the prefix retro. Retro meaning backward, Ret retroactive. Some would say retroactive, right? And we have prefixes of number. And you have prefixes like semi, which means half, mono, which means one, monochromatic. You have bi, meaning two, and the word is binary. You have tri, meaning three, in the word triangle or tripod. Quad, meaning four, quadrangle. Penta, meaning five, pentagon that famous building in Washington. And then you've got hex, which means six, hexa, hexadecimal. And you've got sept, which means seven, right? And you have the word oct, which means eight, octal. Then you have the prefix des, which means den, ten, decimal. And then you have multi, meaning many, multiprogramming, multiplexer. And there are other prefixes besides that we have just gone through. Prefixes like pro, which means for, auto, meaning self, automatic. The word co, meaning going together, coordinate. New, meaning new. You might come across words like neoclassical and then pan which means all for instance you might have you might come across the word pan islamic meaning dealing with all islamic countries we will try to find out what the prefixes mean in a few sentences you will find sentences on your screen and these sentences unlike the earlier ones are related with computers, with your field. Take the first sentence. Non-impact printers are inexpensive and silent. Now, in this sentence, pick out the prefixes. I'll read this out again. Non-impact printers are inexpensive and silent. Obviously, the, word, the prefix non is the first one and the other one is in, non-impact, the prefix non, that is the prefix and then in the word inexpensive, it is in. Sentence number two, tape marks, tape marks are unmagnetized reflective strips stuck onto the tape. Tape marks are unmagnetized reflective strips stuck onto the tape. And it is the prefix un in the word unmagnetized and the prefix re in reflective. Sentence number three. The octal and the hexadecimal systems are number systems used as a form of shorthand in reading groups of four binary digits. The octal and hexadecimal systems are number systems used as a form of shorthand in reading groups of four binary digits. It's the prefix oc, the prefix hex and the prefix by. One meaning eight, the other meaning two. All right. And number four, sentence number four, the internal locations of a computer are called its primary memory. The internal locations of a computer are called its primary memory. And it is IN in internal and pre, 
pri in primary. Number five, multiprogramming is when more than one program can be present at different storage locations of the memory at the same time. And there was only one prefix in this sentence. And that prefix was multi. Sentence number six. Peripheral devices can be either input devices, such as card readers, or output devices, such as printers. Peripheral devices can be either input devices, such as card readers, or output devices, such as printers. The prefixes here were peri in the word peripheral and in in the word input and out in the word output. Sentence number seven. The decoder, a component of the control unit, takes the coded instruction and breaks it down into the individual command commands necessary to carry it out. The decoder, a component of the control unit, takes the coded instruction and breaks it down into the individual, individual commands necessary to carry it out. Again, in this sentence, there was only one word which had a prefix to it and it was the word decoder. Decoder. Sentence number eight. Microcomputers are becoming very important in small business applications. And it is the word microcomputers. And in that word, the prefix was micro. Sentence number nine. A tape drive transmits the electromagnetic impulses to the memory of the computer. A tape drive transmits the electromagnetic impulses to the memory of the computer. Two words with prefixes. The word transmits, in the word transmits, it is trans, that is the prefix, and in the word electromagnetic, it is electro. And the final sentence, sentence number 10, semiconductor materials used are used in the making of transistors. Semiconductor materials are used in the making of transistors. And the two words are semiconductor and the other word is transistors. You had two prefixes. One was semi and the other was trans. Now we will do another exercise and you will fill in the blanks that you see on your screen. A, a word bank is given you and you choose the correct uh, prefix from that bank and fill in the sentences. Sentence number one. Byte means one million bytes. You fill in the first blank. Out of those 12 words, which one is the correct one? And that is the prefix auto. Auto byte means one million bytes. Number two dash, blank, space, you have to fill this, the first one. Plexing is when many electrical signals are combined and carried on on only one optical link. Now this one is very easy because the word plexing, so it has to be multi. Multiplexing is when many electrical signals are combined and carried on only on one optical link. Sentence number three. 
blocks are separated from each other by marks called dash block gaps. Now here, which prefix would be suitable? It has to be, there is a clue where it says separated from each other. So, it's going to be the prefix inter. Blocks are separated from each other by marks called inter-block gaps. Sentence number four. The number system we use in everyday life is the dash blank mul system which has a base of 10. Very simple, decimal, deci, because you've been given the clue base of 10 and the word decimal is the correct, uh, the prefix, prefix deci is the correct prefix. Number five, CRT terminals are very useful dash active devices for use in airline reservations. And the word would be, uh, the prefix would be inter. CRT terminals are very useful interactive devices. Number six, some screens are dash blank space chromatic whereas others produce multicolor pictorial graphics. It has to be monochromatic. Mono meaning one color, monochromatic, while you've got the other word multi. Number seven, the complete description of the logical structure of data is called the schema and the description of the parts, the dash blank schema. Now, you have a clue in that sentence and that is you have the word complete description on one side which is called the schema and the description of the parts. So, it has to be a prefix that would be partly complete. The word, the word sub it has to be the word, the, the prefix sub. So, it is sub schema. You have got complete schema uh, on the other side and complete description is the schema and parts, a description of the parts would be a sub schema. Number eight, the main storage locations of a computer are called its and part of the word is given you, A-R-Y. The main storage locations are called its primary storage. Very easy. Number nine, the small ferrite rings called cores have two states. They can be either magnetized or dash magnetized. It has to be demagnetized. The prefix is D. And the last sentence, the introduction of chips or dash conductor memories made it possible to reduce the size of the computer. The introduction of chips or semiconductor memories made it possible to reduce the size of the computer. I shall read a paragraph and as you follow it, underline the prefixes and complete the table that follows on your slide. Computers may have a short history, but prior to their development, there were many other ways of doing calculation. These calculations were done using devices that, that are still used today, the slide rule being a perfect example, not to mention the ten fingers of the hands. These machines, unlike computers, are non-electronic and were replaced by faster calculating devices. 
it wasn't until the mid 1940s that the first digital computer was built. The post war industrial boom saw the development of computers take shape. By the 1960s, computers were faster than their predecessors and semiconductors had replaced vacuum tubes only to be replaced in a few years by tiny integrated circuit boards. Due to micro mini miniaturization in the 1970s, these circuits were etched onto wafer thin rectangular pieces of silicon. This integrated circuitry is known as a chip and is used in microcomputers of all kinds. It has been forecasted by the end of this decade exceptionally faster and smaller computers will replace those in use today. Now we have looked at prefixes thoroughly. I shall read another paragraph and as you listen to it and as you read it, it as well, you complete the table at the end and you underline the suffixes. Now we will uh, review suffixes in case you've forgotten them. So let us just do an exercise in which what you learnt la in the last lesson shall be reviewed. And then after you've underlined the suffixes, you complete the table given at the end. A computer can solve a series of problems and make hundreds, even thousands of logical decisions without becoming tired or bored. It can find the solution to a problem in a fraction of the time it takes a human being to do the job. A computer can replace people in dull routine tasks, but it has no originality. It works according to the instructions given to it and cannot exercise any value judgment. There are times when a computer seems to operate like a mechanical brain, but its achievements are limited by the minds of human beings. A computer cannot do anything unless a person tells it what to do and gives it the appropriate information. But because electric pulses can move at the speed of light, a computer can carry out vast numbers of arithmetic logical operations almost instantaneously. A person can do everything a computer can do. But in many cases, that person would be dead long before the job was finished. Now, in this exercise, you have to underline the suffixes. I shall not tell you which suffixes there are. All right. Now, we are going to do an exercise in which your vocabulary, an exercise to increase your vocabulary because as a learner, as a student of English, you must have a large vocabulary. And in future, in every lesson, I shall be giving you a number of words so that by the end of the course, you will have built up a large vocabulary. Now, you will, you will see on your screen a group of words. You, will, you must encircle the word or expression that is nearly the same in meaning as the words given at the beginning, the uh, given in bold type, bold face type. 
in the introductory phrase. The first one, admonish the child. The phrase is admonish the child. Now, admonish is a big word. You've been given four choices. Dress, teach, praise, and warn. Out of those four, which one do you think is the correct meaning of the word admonish? When you admonish the child, what do you do? Do you dress the child? Do you teach the child? Do you praise the child? Or do you warn the child? The correct word is warn. When you admonish the child, you warn the child. Number two, efface a wrong. Efface. This four choices again. One is discover. Two, wipe out. Three, hide. And four, apologize. You apologize for something. When you efface a wrong, do you discover? Do you wipe out? Do you hide a wrong? Or do you apologize for a wrong that's been committed or done? The correct one is, take a minute. Well, at times you might just have to guess. But never mind. Even if your guess is wrong, at least you tried. Uh, the correct one would be number B. Wipe out. Efface. Wipe out. You wipe out a wrong. You efface a wrong. Number three. A perennial favorite. Again, four choices. Old-fashioned. Recent. Temporary or enduring, a perennial, you've got a hint over there, a favorite. Could it be old-fashioned? Could it be recent? Temporary? No. If it's a favorite, it could either be an old-fashioned or enduring. Perennial means that which goes on and on and on. It's enduring. And number four, Subjugate the enemy. Subjugate the enemy. Right? Four choices. Torture, release, kill, defeat. Now the word enemy, the choices that you've been given over there, they are all related with the word enemy. Now do you torture your enemy or you release the enemy or you kill him or you defeat him? So, I think we will not torture or release or kill, but we will defeat the enemy. So, the correct choice would be D, defeat. Subjugate means defeat. Number five, jeer, jeer at our efforts. Now, examine, examine our efforts. Reject, criticize, ridicule. Now, in that phrase, you have the word at. You can't have examine at our effort. Examine our effort. Reject, criticize. When you jeer at someone, you laugh at that person. So, it has to be ridicule. Ridicule our efforts. Number six, affirm Adherent, a firm adherent. Now, could adherent be enemy, outside, supporter, or student? I don't think one has ever heard of a student being, uh, you know, the word adherent being used for a student. It has to be supporter, a firm supporter, a firm adherent and supporter are the same, have the same meaning. Number seven, a semblance of order, a semblance. And your choices are appearance, lack, result, opposite. Could something be, could it be a lack of order? No. 
the correct one is A, appearance. An appearance of order. Number eight, an, an irate guest. The choices are sociable, someone who is agreeable. Then the other word is welcome, a welcome guest. Talkative, you can have a talkative guest. And the last one, angry. It is number D, angry. An irate guest is a guest who is angry, who is annoyed. Right? It is from the word irritate, irate, someone who is annoyed, someone who is angry. And number nine, a brief altercation, a brief altercation. Could it mean a shower, rainfall? Could it mean argument, relief, statement? Now notice that the word statement, a brief altercation, you can have a brief statement, you can have a brief relief, a brief argument, and even a, br a brief shower. All four can be used with the word brief. A brief altercation means a brief argument. Right? Now, in today's lesson, you looked at prefixes, you looked at ordinary examples of prefixes, and you looked at examples from computer, from your study of computers. There were a lot of words taken from your uh, computers. And then we had an exercise, we did a number of exercises in which we looked at vocabulary. And with that, we come to the end of today's lesson. Next time, when we meet, we shall be looking at major and minor details, how to read with comprehension and how to locate major and minor details in a paragraph or in a passage. See you next time. Allah.